Kitty here, back again with another real talk for you. You might notice I have something a little new here with me, but I thought rather than just talk about that the whole time, I'd use it to segue into a bit more of an enriching topic, the lesser known story of Dr. Mary Edwards Walker, the first female Congressional Medal of Honor recipient and a early pioneer believe it or not, of gender norms. All right, first things first though, here's Mary, my new Sig Sawyer M400 tread. Uh, for a quick little butt to muzzle here, uh, it's got a Magpul SLK stock, um, forged aluminum receivers. Um, let's see, up here we got Magpul backup sights, a SIG Romeo 5 red dot here, the, of course, tread uh, hand, aluminum handguard, Midwest Industries foregrip, um, and actually a uh, Hollow Sun PID Plus, which is what I use as a green laser and white light. It's pretty slick. All with a uh, Magpul rifle and sling here. And gotta say, hacking, <laughs> hacking love this thing so far. It's quite schnauz. But uh, anyway, anyone who knows me, uh, and or at least knows me for a while, uh, knows I like to name things that are important to me. Um, call it like a superstitious kind of thing, but. Uh, I feel like relatively inanimate objects all kind of have personalities and are responsive to the things we say and and feel hippy dippy shit. But you know, it's like the same idea behind like why sailors name ships and refer to them as ladies, or uh, you know, if you talk to plants, the plants actually grow. There's been studies on that, so you know, that's the thing. This is the thing. But uh, for this particular one, I chose to name it Mary Walker. Well, <clears throat> to give you a little bit of a history lesson on who Mary Walker is, uh, the real doctor, Mary Walker, was born in 1832. While her family were Christians, uh, they openly encouraged the whole family to be free thinkers. They were staunch abolitionists at the time, where this, you know, slavery was still a thing. And um, they encouraged their kids to uh, basically not adopt traditional gender roles, or at least not conform to them. Um, they lived in a remote farm, and so kind of just, you know, part of being living on the homestead is some of that shit doesn't really matter so much. Um, and that seemed to be the case, at least in Dr. Walker's family. So, uh, Mary would carry this spirit kind of into college with her, much to the chagrin of her, uh, professors. And, uh, she actually got a medical degree and started her own practice. So women at this time, that was like not a thing. And they were, they were heavily discriminated against. And so... It, she was kind of uh, supported, at least her business, by her husband at the time. Well, it turns out her husband uh, committed infidelity, whatever that means. I mean, it's like 1800s. I'm like, you assume he cheated, but... And Dr. Walker, when she actually was in medical school, uh, would be kicked out of debate societies. Um, and her practice ultimately, she had to move on from that because couldn't really support as a single lady business. It wasn't really a thing at the time. So then in 1861, the American Civil War broke out. And in spite of all the prejudices against women at the time, 
uh, her and many others like her volunteered uh, with the Union Army and as nurses, uh, spies, uh, all kinds of roles that were filled by women at the time. And so she was rejected numerous times. Um, and so she got to the point where she just started showing up and started doing it for free. So she worked as an assistant for free um, for several years and even was in battle and would be crossing enemy lines to get people uh, uh, you know, for just for free. Uh, it wasn't until like several years into it that she would eventually get a commission and become the first commissioned female surgeon uh, in the United States Army. So fun fact. Uh, kind of an interesting side story too to all this while uh, Dr. Walker was in the Civil War. Uh, she met Francis Hook, which is a uh, another rather famous uh, lady, gender queer lady in history, who uh, was actually impersonating a male in order to be a soldier in the Union Army. So she met a lot of interesting folks like that and made a lot of friends like that throughout her life. Uh, eventually, however, in one of her little uh, battlefield escapades, she assisted a Confederate uh, officer, or a Confederate medic, I should say, in performing an amputation on a soldier, which, you know, seems like a humanitarian thing to do, but uh, then they arrested her, of course, for being a spy. Uh, so she was actually held in a Confederate prison for, it was like a period of like a couple of years, I want to say. But, like, it was really brutal, the conditions were awful, everyone was malnourished, and she essentially uh, suffered a lot of lifelong health complications because of her captivity in that prison. Eventually, she would be exchanged for a Confederate major, but uh, that wasn't really where... I, you know, where her legend kind of ended either. Um, she would go on to run a prison, head an orphanage, uh, join the women's suffrage movement, become an abolitionist. She would write two books and uh, basically continue to upset people with the way she dressed like a total chat. Used to call me on my cell phone. Um, just, you know, same. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's pretty cool. So, uh, in honor of her service, and especially the uh, time spent as a POW, and uh, all the brave acts that she did as a surgeon, she was awarded by President Andrew Johnson the Congressional Medal of Honor which made her the first and still the only recipient, uh, female recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, of which there's like 3,225. So that really, that says something. Um, she didn't have a formal commission at the time that made her eligible. She was more like contracted under the uh, army. Um, and even still, Andrew Johnson was uh, willing to make an exception in her case. Um, as Dr. Walker was quite an exceptional person. So, she's again, far from, far from over, however. Um, like I said, she kind of just really worked that whole uh, angle of the time of trying to bring about women's equality partly through the way she dressed. So, a lot of people... Uh, at the, like looking back on this now, I'd probably think it's super silly, but women, for instance, wearing trousers was considered super uh, uncouth. Um, anything but long dresses, um, and like uh, you know, it it was all very restrictive, uh, corsets and lace and things like this, and uh, women at the time were starting to kind of rebel against this whole notion, and were starting to adopt more. Uh, atypical forms of dress so dr walker was kind of on the forefront of this whole this whole notion 
and uh, <laughs> even went so far as in uh, 1870 in New Orleans, uh, she was arrested for dressing as a man. So that kind of, if that tells you what the society was like back then. They don't know much different than now. Uh, so, um, but yeah, so got, uh, went to jail. They kind of bullied her for wearing dude's clothes, to which she kind of is famously quoted as saying, uh, I don't wear men's clothes, I wear my clothes. Which is like, based, based. Hella. I, su I totally support this notion. So, kind of, one thing that sort of led to Dr. Walker's fall into obscurity was that she, I mean, and again, this is like, in retrospect, all the things that seem super weird now. Um, she had this belief that the Constitution already granted women the right to vote and that there wasn't a need for an amendment, which were, was pretty unpopular with the feminist movement un, at the time, um, seen as kind of like a controversial view. But to her point, like she just straight up registered to vote and she, you know, just acted like, you know, like, and it makes a lot of sense as an argument to say that the constitution just inherently gives us all rights but, uh, you know, so it's kind of interesting how that cultural debate at the time, that slight political nuance, which, you know, really doesn't seem that big in retrospect, is sort of what led to her being uh, ostracized by her own, by the feminist movement at the time. Um, and her insistence on wearing dude clothes and pants and the hat top hats and stuff, it was like... A, all things that at the time were considered super fringe and super controversial. And now here we are. <laughs> so, um, she eventually, Dr. Walker, would pass away in 1919, just one year before the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution finally codified women's rights to vote. And two years, actually, after her Medal of Honor had been taken away by an official act of Congress. The funeral was simple. Uh, an American flag was laid on her casket and she was buried still wearing a suit and her hard-earned medal. She died in relative obscurity in a humble manner befitting her personality surrounded by gender nonconformists she had taken into her home over her lifetime. So she was somewhat of a uh, uh, like a wayward home kind of uh, type person or she'd adopt and take in random other genderqueer people or uh, folks who just didn't fit within the norm of society at the time. Uh, and so that was, you know, that those were her people in, in life and in the end. Uh, it wasn't until 1977 that President Jimmy Carter finally decided posthumously to uh, reaward or the Medal of Honor, uh, sort of solidifying her place as the sole female recipient. Um, yeah, I'm just be real. I found this story to be one of the more interesting and inspirational biographies I've read. Um, it's like a lot of folks consider gender equality and progressive gender norms and dress type stuff to be a new phenomenon, but it's like this it's been around for a long time and lots of people like Dr. Walker have been around and serving their country or doing all kinds of various acts of goodness and I think it is worth noting and are certainly worth taking a, a moment to reflect on so, um, like, <laughs> one reason or another, we usually have to, uh, you know, like, we might have to hide who we are, or at the time, the words don't exist for what we're trying to say, and the culture doesn't necessarily understand, but 
we're always here. Like, we've always been here. It's not, like, a new phenomenon. So I think that her story is one of the... One of my favorite cases, I think, of this. I owe the happiness in my own life to the selflessness and courage of people like Dr. Walker, who blazed those trails ahead of us. And I think we, we are on the shoulders of giants in that sense. So we should recognize them. Uh, so with all that said, let's pour one out for old Dr. Mary Edwards Walker. Smoke one up. Um, well done. <laughs> Alright, this is Rebel Kitty. Over and out.